Uh, we're coming to the uh, groundbreaking ceremony for the interchange at Clinton Keith Road and the I-15 freeway. And uh, it's in Wildemar and it's a big event for Wildemar and Marietta to get access to and from uh, this great shopping area and the hospital. <laughs> Now it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor of Wildemar, Ben Benoit, to make some welcoming comments and introductions. And easier access Mayor. for commerce. And at this point, our construction costs, plus our contingency funds from the city, is up roughly about $15 million. I find that very interesting that another bridge that also was $15 million that was started in 1869 and completed in 1883 <laughs> is the Brooklyn Bridge. Now that bridge, there's not too many similarities here between here and Wildemar. But a couple are that this is going to be a great improvement to commerce, just like it did for the city of New York and Brooklyn, although now they're one city. It's also going to be some, uh, um, it's also something, that one of the similarities that before the Brooklyn Bridge was very difficult to get from one side to the other. Just like here, sometimes it's very difficult to get across Clinton Key. It's going to be a great improvement for our city. And I would like to personally thank Bob Buster and, Super and his staff at the Supervisorial District 1 for doing a great job and look looking to the future years ago and starting this project as we look to our future in Wildemar here and starting our projects hopefully further uh, north of here on Baxter and Bundy Canyon. So thank you and uh, we'll have uh, thank, you. thank you, Mayor. And now uh, I'd like to introduce First District Supervisor Bob Buster to make some comments. Supervisor. Yeah, thanks. What a really auspicious beginning, and we need auspicious beginnings of big projects because there's all kinds of hookups, as you know, and we hope um, and we think that our, our uh, transportation department, uh, Caltrans and the CHP, and we're glad to see the CHP here this morning, are, uh, will be doing a lot of important things to ensure that uh, uh, we maximize uh, circulation during the construction period and that everything stays safe, too. That's something we take for granted uh, the safety of the workers out here when there's these construction projects and I'm sure the, the press will be working with us to uh, emphasize that to all the motorists to slow down and take care in what's going to be a very intensive construction zone here for the next next couple of years. As you might expect there's a long lead up to this project and a lot of it is in people's minds. And one of the things I want to emphasize is the long range vision that uh, was encompassed in this project. And even the name, Clinton Keith, and I'll mention that in, in, in a little while. And who, who, who was Clinton Keith? Well, I think it's really an apt person, uh, official, to name this, um, this road after. Because this road, this road takes us a long way in Riverside County. It stretches across the great reaches of the Southwest County. I mean, look at it from the, from the hilly areas, uh, it used to be very remote, now being opened up uh, to a lot of development on the Santa Rosa Plateau, all the, that reserve and its, its worldwide reach. I mean, it's tourists coming in from all over, going to that area. Bear Creek, what a wonderful, uh, wonderful early development here uh, on the west side. Uh, even, even I can remember in 93, you had to ford that stream and a few of the a few of the cars got mud up, uh, mud up to their uh, transmissions in those days. That was just just a few short years ago. Um, and then here on on this side, you know, the promise of this arterial um, and its connection to the I-15 is being realized. Not only have the significant investment in the commercial, which is a great tax producer for Wildemar in this case, but also uh, it has been for the county. And also, it's a lead-in to other shopping centers for the city of Murrieta. So it's a real pivot point of transportation and commercial uh, growth, as well as uh, as well as important services here. I was very glad to see David Hornstein, who's developed many of the shopping centers just across the freeway from us, is here today, and he's planning on more. So this is a real uh, a real upper for uh, for private investment here. 
and look at the other investments, Southwest Healthcare Systems, with a hospital here, now booming. Uh, Southern California Edison, it's regional, regional uh, office site. Uh, and I hope, work with uh, San Jacinto District, there will we'll soon have the uh, junior college over on the 80 acres fronting here in Clinton Keith to, to the west. But you can then indicate Clinton Keith, as you know, across the I-215. Uh, we'll be completing that, um, as you may have read in the newspapers, uh, with a lot of uh, acquisitions, both for right-of-way and for habitat conservation off the east. And uh, what a wonderful, wonderful vision, and what an important pivot point, and it has been a choke point. So we're going to make it a pivot point, not a, ch not a choke point. And there are a lot of folks right here in this community that saw that potential and knew what knew that this was a high priority need to get off the drawing boards and get it funded and get it under construction. And primary among those were what we call the Land Development Review Committee. That one when it was just uh, previous to cityhood. And I wanted to particularly thank uh, Cheryl Aide, former council member, for her hard work on that group. Yuri Andre was very, very active. George and Marie Taylor, who's now passed on, uh, were instrumental in looking ahead and saying, Boy County and Future City, you need to work together and really keep this on the front burner. Keep it really burning hot. Uh, Bob Cashman, before he became the council member and mayor, was right on top of this. And that, that he was really instrumental in what the, really the backstory of the funding is. This project may have never proceeded if it weren't for people like Bob Cashman, who worked with us to see that we need advance funding for this. There were, we're, we didn't get any, any state or local funding for this at all. I mean, it's any state or federal funding. It's all local, it's all local. So Bob worked with us and Juan Perez, our transportation department, and uh, my staff to talk to developers, hey, look, we need to advance the fees that you're paying in the Southwest Road and, Bren benefit, Road and Bridge Benefit District. Advance them so you're paying earlier in the process at the time of map recordation. And we're really fortunate that Juan and his staff said that's the, that's the real critical thing here because we have a lot of maps that have been recorded but they're not being built. So without that provision in to advance the funding, uh, the local funding, this may have stayed on the drawing boards. And we're lucky too with the economy, bids are coming in. I understand the Brooklyn Bridge even hit, hit a recession in the period, so that 15 million. But I think, I think Mayor Benoit makes a very apt comparison here on the importance of these uh, public works projects to all of us, really. And how much in the back of our minds we're all saying, should I go down to Clinton Keith? Will it be all tied up, you know? Or should I use some other route? Well, we want to strip that kind of worry off your uh, off your consciousness, and uh, we want to do that in other parts of the county. Um, and so the, the cooperative nature of this effort here uh, between the two cities, Marietta and uh, Mayor Gibbs. You're still mayor. <laughs> okay. Well, I know it rotates. And Rick Gibbs. We're very happy to see him here too. The city of Waldemar. Uh, the county and all the uh, surrounding institutions has been great and we look forward to working with you on other important projects here on Clinton Key Court. Let me say a little about Clinton Key. All right, his full name, this a gentleman, is Adna Clinton Key. Like, and that, was a, that was a mouthful, so he'd like to be called Bud. Maybe Juan Perez can fill in other blanks, but it's a very interesting history. This gentleman worked starting the surveyor's office of the county in, uh, in 1925. He, he went on, I don't know, 45, 50 years, he worked surveyor, kind of road commissioning the flood, he worked flood control office for a while. So he really had a broad experience and worked with the county when it was uh, through a great era when it was being transformed. And so uh, this important road, a backbone of the Southwest County, is uh, owes a lot to the vision of people like that. and. It really, really leads to what, what's our vision now? Is it going to carry as long as Bud Keith's vision did? Are we going to, are we going to not just make short-term decisions? Are we going to fund things and think about things for the betterment of the next generations to come? And that's what's all at stake right here in this project. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Supervisor Buster. Now I'd like to introduce Juan Perez, Director of the Riverside County Transportation Department. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, one last thing on uh, Mr. Bud Keith. Uh, I can't uh, resist seeing Supervisor Stone here. Uh, one of the things he's known for was uh, actually using prison uh, gangs to build roads. And the original uh, Larry Smith uh, Correctional Facility was actually the industrial road camp for prisons. So Supervisor, I know very ne near and dear to your, uh, your heart. Um, I just want to take a quick minute again to thank everyone uh, for your uh, participation today and really all the hard work that has gone into making today happen. Uh, I hope you take a minute to uh, get a brochure or come here and look a little bit more detail. This is going to be quite an improvement. We are building an eight-lane uh, uh, freeway deck. It will have three through lanes in each direction. It will have uh, two left turn lanes in each direction getting onto the freeway. Um, it will have uh, expanded off ramps, a minimum of uh, three lanes in each direction, and actually four in the heavy southbound movement where you have the left turns uh, coming into the city of Wildemar and the city of Marietta. So it is going to be quite an improvement. Um, there are uh, many folks that work to get here today. I want to acknowledge uh, one gentleman in particular, our project manager, Typhoon Saglam, with the Transportation Department. He's been uh, living this project for a number of years. I also want to thank our um, uh, consulting uh, firm, URS Consultants, that prepared the plans. Uh, I want to thank uh, Griffith Company, who's going to be our contractor. Thank you. We look forward to working with you. And I would like to thank uh, Tim Desmura with the uh, City of Wildemar, who uh, has been uh, participating in the project also since the city's incorporation. Thank you, Tim. So we're very excited to get this going. Um, we know that, uh, unfortunately, construction delays and impacts are unavoidable. However, one of the things I want to do today is to get the word out that uh, there's a lot of information. You can become a Twitter follower of the interchange if you would like. <laughs> We're not uh, quite expecting uh, Kim Kardashian numbers, but uh, we've had uh, other projects with 100 or so followers, so you can get updated information uh, on uh, closures, uh, ramp closures, uh, what have you. Uh, you can follow on our uh, website that's uh, again listed on the handout and one of the things we're going to be setting up are video cameras that take shots every 15 minutes so if you want to check before you leave home or check on your iphone as you're driving uh, and maybe decide you want to go another way at least you have some advanced information to be able to do that uh, we're also on uh, facebook uh, we're uh, we have a project hotline we have uh, community uh, construction coordinator, uh, Mr. Dennis Green, who is uh, here today as well, and he is holding a series of community meetings. We have an emergency services task force to so, uh, resolve any issues. Uh, we have a business task force to try to cut down impacts as much as possible. So with all that, uh, we're, we're uh, very excited to get here. I would like to thank all of you that have participated to get us uh, here today. Uh, one particular note, the Supervisor Buster mentioned this is all locally funded. Uh, which is uh, really, um, uh, uh, I think, an amazing uh, thing to be able to do. And that's thanks to the hard work that Riverside County has done uh, over the years to have uh, local funding programs in place, such as the Transportation Uniform Mitigation Fee that the county and all the cities pay into. And uh, one of your speakers uh, in a little bit here is going to be Mr. Rick Bishop, who administers those funds. There's uh, about $9.3 million in uh, what we call TUM funds in addition to the seven and a half million dollars in road and bridge funds, uh, four million dollars in other uh, transportation uh, development impact fees, and a two million dollar contribution. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs from the city of Marietta. So uh, we uh, look forward to doing this project and working with the city to bring it to a successful com uh, completion. Thank you.